let's talk about my tips and tricks for taking a kratom tolerance break or lowering your kratom tolerance. Chances are you've heard both sides of the spectrum. You've heard the people who will say, oh, I've stopped with no problem. And then you've heard the people say, oh, I've stopped taking it and I literally had zero withdrawals, I had no problem. And then you hear the other side of things where people say it's literally the worst thing they've ever experienced. I think somewhere in between there kind of lies the truth. But everybody's body is different and everyone processes things differently. And so when you are taking a kratom tolerance break or just lowering your dose so that you can reset your tolerance, you're going to have different withdrawal effects. You might not have any or you might have some pretty severe ones. And let's talk about what you can expect. First up, let's talk about what kratom tolerance is. So kratom tolerance is when your body gets used to the feeling and the effects of kratom over time, if especially if you're taking it consistently and at large amounts, and then you have a reduced response to the kratom. That's why you see people take more and more and more, and then they aren't responsible in taking matters into their own hands and reducing their amount. So you're building up this tolerance to the plant, and it happens with caffeine too. If you think about it, if you start drinking an energy drink every day, eventually you're not gonna really feel that anymore. And that used to happen to me with pre-workouts that had beta alanine in it, in it, and at first I would feel that like tingly beta alanine feeling, and then over time, as I got used to the beta alanine, I would start to feel it less and less, and I'd have to increase the amount of pre-workout I was taking, which was really bad for me. And now I just go for non-stim pre-workouts, but that's a whole other topic for another day. There are ways to reset your kratom tolerance, and they don't always have to involve completely stopping taking kratom, so we'll talk about that too. So what are your first steps when you realize that you have a tolerance to kratom and you want to do something about it? Well, maybe a little bit easier said than done, you are going to decrease your amount of kratom. And there's this saying in the community that I definitely wholeheartedly believe in and live by, and that is less is more. And I have found that when I have decreased the amount of kratom that I have taken, that I still experience some really great effects and it does what it needs to do, even at 25% less of what my serving size typically is. And I'll be honest with you, I've taken the same amount for the past three years now, and I'm gonna do a whole three year updated video and all of that stuff, but I have been taking the same amount between one and a half and two grams for every serving size for the past three years, and I still feel it. Maybe it's not the exact same like it was the first few weeks that I started taking Kratom, but it's pretty close. So you'll need to scale to weigh out every single serving size and you want to do this and it's very important because you can't just guesstimate. If you are using a teaspoon, you might grab a little bit more one time, a little bit less the next time. And I always say if you want the most effective serving, you need to use a scale every single time you consume Kratom. And that's my personal belief. I seriously believe in that and I preach that to everybody. I always have scales on me. I have one scale that I actually have on backup in case one of mine breaks because actually I don't know what I would do and I don't even know what my serving size is in teaspoons. I only know in grams because I weigh it every single time. And if you're at the point that you're like freaking out and you're thinking, oh, I'm taking 10 grams. This is horrible. I'm never going to be able to get to that point. Be gentle on yourself. You're just going to make yourself stressed out if you think that way. So be kind to yourself and maybe have an accountability partner. If not, I'll be your accountability partner. Keep a journal and keep track. Joey Talks actually makes a really cool journal. He's another really big Kratom advocate and Kratom information person here on YouTube. He makes this Kratom guide and journal that can help you lower your amount, keep track of it. He gives really great tips and tricks in there. And so this is a shameless plug for his Kratom guide and journal. I think it's awesome and you can get it on Amazon. He doesn't even know I'm mentioning him in this video, but he's an amazing person and I love his content and I love everything that he puts out. Even better, if you are newer on your Kratom journey, make scheduled breaks. Go into your calendar and make scheduled breaks. I would say take a week off every month if you can afford to do that. If you are someone like me and you have a chronic illness, you have chronic pain, and you really need it every single day, I still think you need to take a break and it might look a little bit different. So for me right now, it looks like I take Kratom for five months on and one month off. So I take two months off out of the year. 
Again, everyone's different. Everyone takes a different amount. Everyone takes different breaks and can find something that works for them. Some people might not ever take a break completely because it would require them to go on medication that they otherwise wouldn't want to be taking. So it might look like for you that you kind of like creep your way up to whatever your threshold is and you're going to set that amount in your mind. So say it's three grams and you say to yourself, I never want to take more than three grams. And you get to the point where you're taking three grams for your serving. Then at that point, you're going to start cycling down. So you might just decrease, I would say just a little bit. The more time you allow yourself to decrease, the less chances you have of withdrawals or any side effects. So you might decrease it down a little bit to like 2.8 or 2.75 grams. And you're gonna keep going down maybe to like two grams. And then once you kind of feel like your kratom's doing what it's supposed to and you're feeling it and all of that, then you can start increasing it back up a little bit again and just play around with this cycle where you get in the groove of things and you know like every few weeks you're doing this kind of cycle where you go back down and go back up and I think that that's totally fine and safe for most people so you might want to give that a try. I like to plan mine around my colonoscopies so I like to take month breaks if I am having a colonoscopy or if I'm traveling or something like that and that really works for me but like I said it's different for everyone so find what works for you. And you're going to want to have an accountability partner because I find that with Kratom the hardest thing about taking these tolerance breaks or resets is that it's so easy to consume Kratom. And whether you're taking powder or capsules or however you're consuming it, it's very easy to take it and it's easily accessible. And so it's really hard to stop sometimes, especially when you're in the habit of taking it so many times every single day and I know for me it's been a little bit hard this time around. I struggled a little bit with tapering as quickly as I wanted to. I gave myself a whole month and I was still kind of scrambling at the end because it was just so easy to consume Kratom. So having accountability like I do here on my platform helps me but if you don't have something like that find someone that you can talk to or if you need to lock it up or whatever it is that you need to do that will help you and maybe give yourself a reward at the end of it. For me, I'm doing a nice little juice cleanse in the middle of my Kratom tolerance break because I love fresh fruit and vegetable juices and they're really pricey in my opinion. And so I am rewarding myself in that way. It's also rewarding my body in a positive way and I'm not spending any money on Kratom or anything. So that money that I save, I can use for something else. Explore other botanicals during this time, and it's one of my favorite things actually about taking a Kratom tolerance break, is that I get to realize how much I love other botanicals. Like, I realized this past Kratom break that I love hirsuta. As I was tapering down, I was taking hirsuta and Jabnica, and hirsuta is so fantastic. And I have a whole video on hirsuta and Jabnica. I'll link it here for you guys. They are wonderful herbs and botanicals, similar to Kratom, but without the more dependent alkaloids, I would say, I think with those you can taper quickly and stop taking them and not even deal with any withdrawals at all. But you wanna make sure that wherever you are getting it from, because it is hard to find, that it's not actually Kratom. And you can tell that by the lab tests getting tested for the alkaloids that are present in Kratom. Also, if you experience things like anxiety, you can try herbs and botanicals such as valerian, lavender, chamomile, and my personal favorite, magnolia bark extract. If you need energy, I love things like bacopa. And I also have this Hello Energy Blend. It's actually good for your adrenals and it has things like ashwagandha, amla, licorice root, so trying out new botanicals and herbs is really fun in my opinion and it makes me have an appreciation for all of these different things. I'm going to do a future video on combining Kratom with other botanicals, but for now I just wanted to mention a couple of them and I mentioned them in other videos too, so make sure you check those out. Overall well-being is so incredibly important. You want to make sure that you are eating a healthy diet, whatever that looks like for you, and walking out in the sunshine for at least 30 minutes a day, doing things that keep your quality of life up, because if you're just sitting at home, you're going to be tempted to grab and reach for the Kratom. You're going to feel down on yourself, maybe a little bit depressed because I find that Kratom really stabilizes my mood for me and you want to make sure that you're getting out and about and that's one of the best things about getting a dog is it forces me to go out with him all the time and that really really helps me get out of that funk I might be in depending on my mood after I've tapered off of Kratom. A great mood boosting herb that I personally love but cannot take because you can't combine it with SSRIs or SNRIs is kana 
and Kana is really wonderful to take in addition to your kratom in the morning i would just add a gram in with my normal kratom serving and i really really liked it back before i was on any snris or ssri medications but you should never put your mood and your well-being completely into a botanical or an herb that really comes from yourself and your self-work that you do to improve your mood every day on your own and finding those things that bring you purpose and joy and fulfillment in your life. Now I feel like I have to throw this in here because it's very important to note that there is an increased problem with kratom extracts I find in the kratom community and because kratom extracts are so concentrated people will take more than their powders worth of kratom extract and it really messes up your tolerance. I think if you're chasing a high, you should go after other botanicals and herbs because kratom is not really the plant for that. And some of these extracts are not tested and they contain other things in them. You have to be really, really careful. But if you are at a spot, I'm never gonna judge anybody, and you're struggling with taking kratom extracts regularly and you don't want to, the best thing you can do is to swap in some of your servings of the extract with powder and then taper down from there. Now, this is just my personal advice and if you really feel like you need help, you need to go to your healthcare professional and consult with them. I say this in almost all my videos and I'll say it again, Kratom is not for everybody and I think some people preach it as like this miracle plant and I think for some people it can be a really great addition to their life but for other people it's just not the right botanical or herb and I think that's totally okay. Don't force yourself to take Kratom because you see it working for other people but it's not working for you. It does not have to be for everyone. If you experience any withdrawals when you are tapering off of Kratom and you're scared, talk to your healthcare provider. But my personal advice and my experience that I have with withdrawal symptoms is I might get a little bit of like restless leg, a little bit achy, a little bit tired, runny nose. So I up my vitamin C intake. I drink tart cherry juice to help my body produce more natural melatonin. I take a CBD and CBN supplement that really helps me sleep at night. I try a bunch of other botanicals and herbs like I mentioned. It's a really good time to test them out, like Bacopa for energy and focus. I keep that healthy lifestyle going. I take magnesium baths to help with the achy joints. There are so many other things you can do to help those withdrawals and they only last, in my experience, like a week. The week completely off is the hardest for me and then I'm totally fine. You're going to be okay if you are tapering down or if you're completely stopping. I know you might have a lot of thoughts going in your head. Just know that I'm here rooting you on. There are so many people out there that are going to root you on as well if you're deciding to take a tolerance break or you're considering stopping Kratom completely. Like I said, it's not for everyone and there are other wonderful botanicals and herbs that I talk about and educate people on on my channel here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can make some more videos about the most frequently asked questions when it comes to taking a reset or tolerance break because I know people have a lot of questions about it. I just want you to feel better and feel more confident going into it that you can do it and I'm here to cheer you on. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. Remember we are all botanical queens and I'll see you soon in the next video.